Hello and welcome back to New Egg TV. I'm your host, Kerry Holzman. And I'm Tom Taylor. And Kerry, today is an exciting day because we have a pretty awesome job. We get a chance to look at these brand new graphics cards from Gigabyte. This is the Extreme Gaming line, and we have the 970, the 980, 980 Ti with liquid cooling, and in the in-win frame behind us, we have a 980 Ti that we're going to benchmark for you guys. And your comments are paying off. We've seen a lot of feedback, and you want the benchmarks? Well, today's your day. All right, Kerry, so as a computer technician, what are some of the factors that come into consideration when you're picking a graphics card? And not just for yourself, but for the customers that you're building a computer for. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, oftentimes, customers have an idea of the card that they want. But more times than not, the customers are just looking at price and performance, which should be right up there with price and performance. If not, the very first thing is reliability, because that performance isn't going to be that important if the card doesn't work. And I do find that the established brands, such as Gigabyte, do have much better support in the rare circumstance that you would even need it to begin with. Right. I mean, you get what you pay for. In the computer industry, it's never been truer. You do get what you pay for. Right, and as a gamer, one of the things that I'm looking for too, which seems kind of silly, is the aesthetics of the card. And what's really cool about these Gigabyte Extreme gaming cards is that they have something called Extreme Outlook on all of them. So they have LEDs around, surrounding each single fan, and they also have Extreme Protection on them, which covers the PCB, which kind of goes right back to that warranty and reliability of your cards. So we all know that one of the most important things when you're putting together a computer and purchasing your components is making sure that they work together. And not just for a few days, few weeks, few months. It's a long-term relationship. It has to last you for years. So how can you determine how much power you actually need for some demanding graphics cards? Is too much power a thing? Yeah, there is such a thing as too much power, especially when it comes to your wallet. Uh, there it gets to be a point of diminishing returns. So for example, most homes in America have 15 amp circuits. 15 amp circuits equ equate to 1800 watts total. That's everything plugged into the circuit, not just the one outlet but the entire circuit. Who would need an 1800 watt power supply unless you've got a 20 amp circuit, which some homes do have. But what frustrates me is when a customer decks out their system with all these great expensive and quality parts and then they cheap out on their power supply. And they end up having a system that's not reliable. And it can often, a bad power supply can damage a very expensive part that costs a lot more than the power supply. So my advice is, and repeat after me, I will not cheap out on my power supply. Now. Newegg has a great free power supply calculator and you just tell it what parts you've got. It'll tell you what your consumption is and then get about 25% more than what you need because if you get exactly what you need, your power supply is going to be working very hard and it will shorten the life of the power supply. Right, and you want to leave room for expandability, so is that 25% still enough? Well, that depends on what you're planning to do. So if you know today as you're building your system that you ultimately want to have an SLI configuration in multiple cards, uh, go ahead and cal use the power supply calculator, figure out how much wattage you need, add about 25% to that. And if you can afford to buy that power supply now, go for it because power supply prices really don't fluctuate in the same way other parts do. In fact, uh, computer cases and power supplies, prices stay pretty flat. Well, let's hop into the performance of these graphics cards because they have some really cool features. Obviously, DirectX 12 and G-Sync, but you can't just get your graphics card right out of the box and plug it into your motherboard and expect to have optimal performance. How can well, you ensure that? You can expect it, but you're not going to get it. Right. And if you're looking at this range of cards, you know, these are the extreme graphics cards. And you to take advantage of them, first of all, DirectX 12. To use DirectX 12, you need to have Windows 10. So if you're playing a game that supports DirectX 12, you've got a video card that supports DirectX 12, your operating system needs to support DirectX 12. G-Sync is a great feature but your monitor has got to be compatible with it or you won't be able to capitalize on that feature. Where you plug the card in on the motherboard matters. Many motherboards have different speeds of the PCI Express slots. Mm. These are extreme cards. We want these in the Times 16 PCI Express slots only. And on most motherboards, that is typically the very first PCI Express slot. Right, and you just check your motherboard manual, it'll tell you which slot. Absolutely, because there may be some exceptions to the rule out there when it comes to which slots support which speeds. If you don't have your motherboard manual, you just visit the manufacturer's website and you can get a PDF of that for free. And once it's optimized, once you've done all of that stuff, you also have to make sure you're checking for the drivers and any patches that might be potentially coming out. It's very, very important that we get the latest updates, not just the Windows updates, and we're all familiar with those by now. And you probably have other software that gets updates. Well, likewise, your games have patches. And all of that, when it comes to gameplay, won't matter as much in most cases as the updated drivers for the video card. 
Now these drivers from the video card manufacturers come out about four to about every four to six weeks. New drivers are out there, and they're free. And I recommend that you download them and install them as soon as possible to ensure that you're getting the best gameplay experience for compatibility, price, and performance. And when it's all said and done, if you follow all of those steps, you are going to get the optimized performance, and you will get great benchmark scores. We put up the 980 Ti to the 3D Mark. Fire Strike benchmarks through all the benchmarks in 3D Mark actually, and were you surprised to see the scores? We're going to pull up the scores for you guys right now, but look at these scores, Kerry. Yes, I was really shocked uh, and skeptical because I had heard that these new 980 Ti's that are coming out were actually faster in most benchmarks than the Titan, and of course the 980 Ti is is a less expensive card than Titan. If I was going to buy a card and I didn't have to want to worry about buying another one for quite some time. That's certainly where I would be focused on. So it's not just about the 3D Mark benchmarks; it's about actual real-life gaming scenarios. So Thank this morning, yeah, exactly, right. So this morning when I got in, I know it's a rough job, but I was playing Star Wars Battlefront when I got in here, and wow, this 980 Ti really performed. I had an absolute blast playing. And we're gonna put the specs for the test rig in the bottom, so you can go and see in the description below what we're actually using. And we're going to keep it consistent so the benchmark scores don't vary because then that's just void at that point. So right. just very overall impressed. You know, thoughts carry on, on the scores that you saw still. I can't even imagine if you get two, three, or four of those in an SLI configuration, throw it up on 4K with three or four monitors, how incredible that would be. But those Carrie's getting a, a little out of control here. These possibilities <laughs> get me excited. You know, Tom, I really think we've killed two birds with one stone with this particular video because not only have we talked about the optimizations and considerations with the video cards, but also at the same time showing off Gigabyte's latest and greatest lineup. Mm -hmm. And one thing we didn't mention uh, that I should have is that these cards are rated by Gigabyte at a zero dB noise level. Yeah, yeah, I don't hear anything. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. And you know what? <laughs> when it's plugged in, it sounds exactly the same. Right. We have it's one really plugged cool. in right behind us. That's yeah, right. That system is on right behind us, and none of the fans are turning on it right now. And when we run the benchmarks, the fans turn on individually, depending on where they need to be cooling. And then they shut right back off again. And even when they're on, they're whisper silent. I'm very impressed by that. And, and noise can be something that gets grating on you over time. It may not be something you notice right away but it is an important consideration when selecting your video card as well. Well, I guess what Carrie's saying is that this is the end of the video, which makes me kind of sad. It makes you sad? Who are you kidding? You're gonna go back and play Battlefront. He knows me too well. <laughs> well, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this benchmarking. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'm Tom Taylor for Newegg TV. And I'm Carrie Holzman, and we'll catch you next time here on DIY Garage.